In this video, I updated my world to 1.17, which means there's new mobs, new blocks, and brand new achievements. So the first thing I want to do is go out and explore with a goal of finding axolotls. Found diamonds. <laughs> Part of me wants to get them, but I'm going to leave them. Actually, I've decided from now on we're going to pick up diamonds when we see them because you can never have too many. wonder if we've got anything useful down here. Face of obsidian. <laughs> I guess I'll take it. I'm pretty sure we're in new chunks now, so maybe in this ravine we could get some... Yes, look at that. As I said, in this ravine we could get copper. I think it is also possible to get copper from drowned and that's like the only way to make a copper farm. But this is a great opportunity to get some new items. Look at this, raw iron as well. If we just go like that, as you can see we get the block of raw iron or the bean block just a cool new block that is in the game and copper seems to be very abundant so i'll probably find a way to get loads of it in the future but for now we're just going to grab what we can get a little bit more raw iron and look at this dripstone just grab this raw iron first and i guess i could mine all this up like we might as well because it's not going to go anywhere else so yeah we'll grab all of this some brand new blocks which i don't know much of what i'm going to do with them but very nice to have grab a little bit of extra iron and now the axolotl search continues and some sort of ravine like this with some flooded caves is going to be the best place to find them we've got a glow squid okay this is the first new mob that we've got now can a squid go in a boat i don't know if i can place a boat here i'm pretty sure the answer is no as you yeah they can't i think they're going minecarts though but this guy looks like he's gonna die if he doesn't get back into some water so i would love to get some glow squids back to my house but that's gonna be too much effort for today so instead we'll take the glow ink sacks there's another one here i feel a bit evil. i should make a glow ink farm yes all these new farms i can make in 1.17 now you guys thought i was running out of ideas after 1100 days but no look at this We've even got axolotls ready and waiting. Get this fella into a book. No, don't. He's, he's fun. No, no, no. I won't let you die. Quick, do something, SP. Get him in the bucket. I just saved that guy's life. You may now refer to me in the comments as the hero of the axolotls. Without a doubt, though, this flooded cave system is the best place to find these new mobs. Look at that. More glow squid. We'll get the ink sacs. Another axolotl here. Which, and it looks like you've taken out a poor glow squid. I, only I can do that. Apparently, there's a 1 in 400 chance of getting a blue axolotl. So, of course, at some point... We need to get that. Seems to have found a mob spawner, eh? Let's get rid of that. Anything good in here? The best thing you can find in there is a not chapel. I've only got four, <laughs> and I want many more. I'd also like to get out of this cave system, which I'm completely lost in. So that has been a pretty successful mission. Although, what have we got here? If it's what I think it is, it's an amethyst geode. Oh, yes, here we go. I shall mine up as much of this as I can. And I want to use fortune on these to actually get the shards rather than the actual thing. Okay, don't break the little ones there. <laughs> They don't drop anything. I really have come in here and completely ransacked the place, haven't I? And the next thing on my list of things to find is some goats. And let's be honest, an extreme hills biome is the perfect place to find them. Look at this, a village situated just by the mountains. With a blacksmith, I don't know what I could possibly find of use here. Okay, you know what, we'll take the diamonds. Diamonds are no longer for peasants, apparently. They are completely useless to me, but they're pretty cool flex. It's nice to be home, sweet home. And I'd like to begin by giving these axolotls a new home. So they could live in here, but they'd then eat all my fish. So I'm thinking I could mine out some of this wall and create a fish tank area for the axolotls. And this new chest here can be purely for new cave stuff. Now that's done, let's revamp this room. I think it's safe to say that the floor should be sand. And then I think I'm going to make the walls ice and see how that looks. Sand is in short supply, so I'm going to grab a couple of shulker boxes and head to the desert. This desert has definitely seen better days since I moved here. But there's still loads and loads of sand to go at. And for those of you asking why I don't make a sand duper, I mean, if I'm going to duplicate sand, I might as well just duplicate everything. And then build a mansion out of netherite blocks. So instead, I have to destroy an entire desert. The shulker boxes are now full. Got all the sand I'm ever going to need. So time to head back home. So let's dig out this floor, add in the sand. And I think I'd like to get some more concrete. Actually, I've got a better idea. I spent ages making this wool farm. So I might as well use some of this. I'm going to see how cyan looks. I'm also going to grab... Okay, what's going on with this green dye sheet? You need to start eating grass a lot faster. Faster, mate. Now look at the lime, look at the yellow, look at the orange, thriving. And then the green, really letting me down. Oh, well, it's not exactly the best colour anyway. So I'm thinking in these corners we could have pillars like that. Then dig out some more stone and add the cyan wool along here. There's definitely potential, but it would probably look better if the cyan wool was like this instead. And I think I'm going to get another coloured wool for the roof. Actually, I've changed my mind. I'm going to try making some concrete. I'm going with cyan. No idea how it's going to work. And I can change it to regular concrete just by doing this. Let's now place down all this concrete. And as it happens, I don't have enough, but <laughs> very useful. I have an entire place here, which is perfect for it. There we we go. It definitely looks different. Hopefully when I add the glass and the water in, it looks a bit better. Thankfully glass is something I have in abundance. So let's fill in all of this. And now I need the water, which you think would be the hard part, but actually it's going to be pretty easy. Look at this, when you've got water everywhere, you can do it very, very fast indeed. What does this place now need? Seagrass, kelp, 
Sea pickles, just stuff to make it more alive. Apparently I don't have any sea pickles, but I know where there's a coral reef nearby. Although it is still about 2,000 blocks in this direction. I've arrived at the coral reef, now for the search for sea pickles. Not really much of a search considering they're literally everywhere. I'm also pretty sure you can bone meal sea pickle to get more. So that's definitely going to be something that I'm going to use. I should probably bring back some coral as well just to spruce up the tank. I've gathered up plenty of stuff. I think I've got enough. So now let's head back home. I've made it back. Let's start adding in some sea pickles. It's starting to come to life, but it is still quite a bit dead. So let's add in some of these as well. Get a little bit on the wall, never hurt anybody. And all I really want to go with that is some seagrass. And I've got plenty of that down here. Well, actually, no, I don't have plenty of that down here. Looks like I need to grab my shears and go and get more. Thankfully, seagrass isn't really that difficult to find. Got over a stack from that. That should be enough. Next, I'd like to breed a load more turtles and then steal all of the eggs. Look at that. Loads and loads of eggs. Just get out of my way. Perfect. We've got 11. What do I want to do with these turtle eggs? Well, I'd like to get some rails, make a hopper minecart, and hatch these turtles somewhere in here. Since I've lasted 1,100 days in this world and still never got a scoot, because whenever my turtle eggs finally hatched, I then never got to see the turtles actually grow up. But this time, the hopper minecart will do the work for me. And we're also going to place a torch here because we don't want anything bad to happen. The turtles can go right there. Yep, you can go there. And... Okay, we should put them all together, but that, that'll do, okay. Now I just have to box it all up, and the newest turtle experiment is ready. In the meantime, I should probably add some seagrass to this place. And I think it's ready. I think once it has some axolotls swimming around in it, it'll look a little bit more lively. Here are my three precious axolotls. Let's put all of these right into here. Now, this next bit's a little bit evil, but... <laughs> these guys will breed if you give them buckets of tropical fish. So this fish and this fish are going to be dinner. Trust me, guys, it's purely for experimental purposes. We just want to see what a baby axolotl is. I'm going to give two pink ones and see if it actually gives you like a pink baby. Let's see what happens when the axolotls breed. There we go. We got a baby pink axolotl. Big surprise there. I just probably read the wiki and apparently it's a one in 1,200 chance of being a blue one. Otherwise, it just inherits the color of its parents. So it was bound to be pink. It had like a 1,200 chance of being blue. Well, that's enough time spent messing in the aquarium. Time to look for something else. And that means searching the extreme hills. Yes, if any of you are still wondering, we're looking for goats. We've got sheep, we've got llamas, but no sign of the goats. Here we go, guys. Mission successful. We have found a goat. I might not be the goat of Minecraft, but this guy certainly is. Look, I'll even give him a name that says that. So yes, we have a long journey ahead of us, but this guy is coming with me. I feel like the best way to get this guy home is to get a load of spruce logs. Build up very, very high indeed. I have run out of blocks, but I am very, very high up indeed. The only thing that could go wrong is if I accidentally kill this guy because I don't land in water, but hey, we'll cross that bridge if we come to it. All right, he's coming with me. Look at that. It's working beautifully. Let's just get that perfect angle so we just glide straight home. I can't really see him too well, but he's still alive. And look at this. We're going to be landing in an ocean. You will be absolutely... Where did he go? Where in the world did I drop this go- What are you doing here? At least you landed in the water. That's enough flying for you. Let's just get in the boat. As if there's an achievement, whatever floats your goat, <laughs> I'll take it. I mean, there can only be one goat of Minecraft. We cannot let this guy die. And I also completely forgot that there's going to be some new advancements to complete. You know, guys, I might believe that this guy is the goat of Minecraft. But if you guys instead think that I'm the goat of Minecraft, then please, please subscribe. It literally takes you less than a second. And I really want to hit 3 million subscribers this year, which we can definitely do. I know it didn't end too well last time I did this, but I'm tired of walking, so I'm building to build height again. And there we go. This time, I'm going to try and fly a little bit slower so the same thing doesn't happen. Let's just go something like this. There we go. Nice and steady. All right. We don't want to let this guy to drop. Otherwise, well, <laughs> it's end of the road for him. So far, so good. The goat's still with us. We've still got loads of height. What could possibly go wrong? Could take a risk and go for that river. I'm going to go for this river because I know I'll definitely be able to get the goat in it. Because that's that's all that could go wrong if I, if I let him take fall damage. So I go like this. The goat's still alive. The journey continues, but we've made great progress. The sheep looks quite confused. He's probably never seen a goat in his life. And here we are, home sweet home. And I've decided the place for this guy is my house. You know, he's not some commoner like the sheep and everything. He is a special, special... Well, he's, a, he's the goat. So you, good sir, belong up here. And you can live with Runner. Runner the parrot. I forgot this guy can actually just jump really, really high. So this, this fence is not a problem to him. And he's going to easily just jump down here at some point. Don't jump down there, all right? You're banned. Plus, what's the worst that can happen to him? He's just going to run around my house. And now this is probably a good time to heal my tools and my elytra. I knew this would happen. Look at this. You're literally dangling on a rope now because you you decided to jump down. You you know what? 
<laughs> You'll be alright, I suppose. And this snow is going to be perfect for covering up this mess. You know, I'm going to attach it to a fence post right here because that'll probably be safer for you. I'd also like to come into here and grab these shards, get some glass, and make tinted glass since I think it's going to be very useful in some future builds. If you didn't know, tinted glass basically lets you see through it but blocks all the light. Ten isn't going to be enough and I suppose if I want more, I'm going to have to find more amethyst geodes. But it'll be all part of my plan for my glow squid farm. Now something that has been an issue in this world for quite some time is my lack of a decent tree farm. I have this one here which works really well and gets me loads of spruce, but I want to build one that gets me other types of wood like birch, jungle and oak. It's going to take quite a few items to build this so I'm going to start gathering them up. After some time I have all the items that I need except for 68 melons and 28 pumpkins. Unfortunately here I only have six pumpkins but I do have a giant melon farm which I'm guessing will work with pumpkins as well. So instead of using this machine to harvest them I'm going to manually mine up some melons and that will give me all the melons I need for the build. And next I'll mine up all of these and instead plant pumpkins. Look at this already we're getting some pumpkins growing. Now for the next question if I flick this lever what happens when the machine meets the pumpkins? That, I just break them and they're in the hopper so I can just pick them up like that perfect what I will do is destroy this composter just temporarily so then pumpkins will get deposited in here and I won't lose any and next I'm going to mine up this mountain so that I can build the tree farm right here and you know what the great thing about shulker boxes are I can go into this one take out a beacon and then build one over here I wonder how the iron golems from that farm feel that I'm using their iron to build a beacon right next to it I will no need to think about that we've now got haste too and now mining up this stone is much much faster you know <laughs> mining out the mountain wasn't really the bad bit it was it was trying to make it look not terrible by terraforming it that's proven to be a disaster this is why i don't like building in minecraft you can't just start placing blocks no you've got to get rid of an entire mountain so to begin with i'm going to place a double chest with a hopper going into that and then into those into that hopper there something like this and then like a block here and a hopper going into that then two pieces of glowstone and solid blocks on top of those and then we're gonna need a dispenser and when i say dispenser i actually mean a dropper they're totally two different well they are completely two different things don't get them mixed up and then a load more items all around like this we're gonna have a dirt block on top of there with a trap or like that. As you can see, further progress has been made. So the bone meal is going to come up here and it's going to dispense onto that dirt block, which will grow the saplings. And you can either get stripped logs by using an axe or slower and get normal logs using your hand. So we're going to build a system that changes the timings based on what tool you're using. And look at that. We have all the pumpkins we need. In fact, we've got a spare pumpkin. So this composter can now go back under there. I mean, to be honest, we're, we're a little bit... Um, yeah, we, we should probably get a chest under here. Never thought I'd say this, but I've just got too much bone meal. So that can all go through there. That can carry on working. The system's good. I should probably sleep. And I can go into my ender chest, grab a load of torches, as well as some shears. Next, I'm going to carve all of these pumpkins, turn them into jack-o'-lanterns. If we place that there, it's then a solid block that can be used with these comparators but it keeps the light levels up as well. And I've got loads of pumpkin seeds that can be composted. I'm guessing all these comparators make loads of sense to you. Y yeah, me too. But don't worry, I'll link the tutorial that I used down in the description so that you can build this too. There's a system here which fills up this dispenser with bone meal using these droppers, but it's so noisy, so I'm just going to... Uh temporarily break this so <laughs> it's quiet for a bit but there's loads of hoppers here now and these will collect the saplings so next i'm going to enclose all this area up there we go next we're going to add five jack-o'-lanterns onto each side and next we can bring out the melons and build some walls there we go all the melons are now placed and next I'm going to add sticky pistons on top of all the melons. This will be the system that crushes all the saplings. And I can fill in all these corners with blocks so that no saplings escape. And now comes the fun part where we start placing all the slime. With open fence gates on the side and a glass block at the bottom. And I do the exact same thing on all of the other sides. Except these ones don't need a glass block at the bottom. Next I'm going to add a too high wall around all of this. With some blocks like this to hold in any extra saplings. And 25 fence gates along here will stop any massive oak trees from growing. And I've now just finished the redstone for the extenders. The piston extenders which get all the saplings as you can see. Yep, it, it goes all the way around on all the sides. And now I can safely say the farm is finished. I just need to load it up with bone meal. And I also need something that I completely forgot to bring. And that is the saplings. I've got 30 oak saplings and 11 birch ones. That should be enough. And I'm going to test it out using first just my hand. So if I first put a sapling like that, there we go, it grows. And then if I hold right click and left click at the same time, it's going to replant the sapling straight away. Look at that. Break all of the leaves. Oh, perfect. And I'm just going to mine up this tree. There we go. And then it, it should... Yeah, it all goes back. Perfect. And I think because I've got haste, I'm mining it a bit faster than the machine expects me to. I'm going to be honest, guys. If I do it in the axe mode, it's pretty glitchy. Um, the These things, they don't really move properly. Look at that. It's just, it's just stuck. I mean, it's moving back and then 
yeah, it's not working too well. But if I do it like this, it works fine. And that lets me get the normal logs anyway, which is what I'd prefer. It has already used up a lot of bone meal, as you can see. So next, I need to hook up this bone meal machine to the tree farm. I've created a row of hoppers which connects from my bone meal farm to the right place. I'm just going to need a dropper right here to finish it. Imagine how much easier Minecraft would be if they just added upwards facing hoppers. So right here, I need an upside down dropper with a comparator coming out of that. And I think if I just do something like this, it, it should work. Put that in there. Okay, okay, hold on a second. Just to make sure there's definitely enough power, we're going to actually add another repeater like that. And then if we put something in... Okay, yeah, you can see it's working. I just need a way to actually power that. Nothing a bit of redstone like this won't fix. So in... Okay, hold on a second. It stopped. So yeah, now it's, it's working. So look at that. They're all going up. They're going into the chest. Hold on, no, we, <laughs> we don't want all of those to go up though, do we? Because they're just going to filter into the system then. All right, guys, this is a little embarrassing, but I put the dropper going into the wrong chest. It, it should be going into that chest up there. I knew this was just going too easy for it to actually work. And now I have to actually use my brain and build it out of three droppers. Turns out it was actually extremely, extremely easy. So if I now put a load of items into this hopper here, you can see they're all filtering up into this chest. So in theory, if I grab some bone meal here and put it into these hoppers and then get rid of this hopper here that's stealing all the bone meal into this chest, all the bone meal goes in here. I can't believe that somehow worked. I will make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing at some point, but I'm just going to box myself in for safety purposes, grab some birch saplings and start using this machine. And if I press F3 and T, it will now work for me completely hands free. The good news is the machine worked perfectly. I've got all of this wood. But because my hoppers went directly below this chest, it was pulling all the items out and put them in there. So the wood should go in here. But as you can see, it's filtering out and going into that chest up there. Not that chest, but the chest next to it. It's a pretty simple fix. Just got to instead bring the hoppers around here. There we go. Good as new. Now all this wood and the sticks can be taken out of here. All I need now is to head back home, grab a couple of shulker boxes and bring back all the birch wood. If I ever need wood again... <laughs> I know where I'm going. Now that's all done, I want to try and find an amethyst geode that's close to my house. But that will be a challenge considering it has to be in an unexplored chunk. So I've got to find a place close to my house that I've never been to before that contains a geode. Considering how slow the chunks are loading, I'm pretty sure this is new territory. In fact, look at that. We've got some new blocks down there. So if I can find an amethyst geode in these caves, it will be perfect. Although I feel like my chances are kind of slim. Hold on a second. I might have just... Look at this. Chances slim? Oh no, it's deep slate. I, I, I thought it was... You know what? I'm just going to go and search in the oceans. Also, I used a totem up battling an iron golem before and I just realised I never replaced it. I was taking a very unnecessary risk. Look how many totems I've gone through. I need to refill this shulker box. Back in search of oceans, I go. This definitely looks like a good area to spot them to me. Aha! One has been spotted. In all honesty, it's actually going to be very annoying as this because it's completely surrounded in water. But first, I'm going to dig away all the blocks that aren't budding amethyst ones. And now the only purple blocks left are the ones that will grow amethysts. And before I continue any further, I want to create some sort of cage over this that gets rid of the water so I can mine away the calci and whatever block this is. The smooth basalt, that's it. I've got plenty of glass, so I'm going to build a border around this entire thing, which could take some time. And there we go. The roof is now finished. Everything is now finished. We're boxed in. Just going to make some sort of entrance way here. Next, I'm going to start placing sponge and hopefully drain this place. I've realized that I'm doing this in an extremely inefficient way, but it is still getting the job done. And now I have successfully drained this entire place. And that means I can get rid of all of this smooth basalt and the calcite. This really has turned into quite the project, hasn't it? This room is now well and truly dug out, I'm going to head back home and get all the items that I need to build the farm. These are all the items that I've got. I'm going to be kind of making this up as I go along, so anything could happen. There's already quite a lot of amethysts that have budded, so if I go like this, look at that, we can get the shards like that, but obviously we want to do it in an automatic way. So the plan is to place all the pistons upside down like this, and then when they activate, they will break off the amethyst. To be honest, guys, I can already tell that this is going to be an extremely, extremely messy build. From what I can tell, the best thing to do with the ones near the top is to place a hopper directly below them, and then not a single one is wasted. This is one of the most complicated things I've ever done, but I'm pretty sure all these hoppers, I mean, this, I mean, this is probably not that efficient, but all these hoppers connect up to each other and lead to this hopper right here. So if I put a few random items in some hoppers around here, they should all end up at the bottom. Thought I'd messed up, but they all ended up in this hopper right here, so it's not a big issue. So all i got to do is make sure that that hopper goes like that. And then they would have just flowed straight through there into here. The next thing I've got to try and do is connect all of these with redstone so they all go... Why am I even trying this? I really thought this would just be some super simple build that would take me like 20 minutes. Come up with a new plan because things are just getting too confusing. If there's diorite down, that means it needs redstone on it. Have you ever had a realisation that you're just a redstone idiot? And that the only blocks that actually need to be powered are the ones in the middle of the pistons? Which means a lot of this redstone isn't actually needed. Now if I'm not mistaken, pressing this button activates every single piston. 
Which means now I've just got to create some sort of hopper clock that goes off every three hours. I have no idea how, but I think this is working. It's the biggest mess I've ever made, but I'm quite new with hopper clocks. So I believe when this empties, which happens every two minutes, this redstone turns off and on, and then an extra item can go into there from this hopper into there. And once this one empties, which I've just made it so it empties, it pulls back the redstone block. And then I think that's when I want a signal to go round. And I've had to add a comparator on this side, powering this redstone as well to make it fully work. So this clock is counting every two minutes. And then this one here is kind of a timer that multiplies that so if that's two minutes and then this is 80 that makes 160 minutes altogether like i said i've been making this up as i go along so i'm going to actually put a sticky piston there and then quickly head back home grab an observer then place that right there with a repeater coming out of that redstone dust connecting up to these pistons i think it worked guys i think that just worked right there that means this hopper just needs 80 items in it in fact i'm gonna make it 79 and that means that every 170 minutes all these pistons will extend so you think i'm done you think i'm just gonna afk here for the next three hours and get all my amethyst shards well you're wrong what i'm actually gonna do is make a chunk loader so that this farm is always working even when i'm not nearby and the way to do that is using hoppers droppers and portals and for this chunk loader we're gonna need three droppers like that and then if we put a block along here we're gonna put a dispenser instead like that then out of this redstone dust we want an observer and if we jump on top of that another observer redstone dust right there and then along here we're going to build a portal next we need a hopper into the dropper and a hopper into that hopper with a block there and a block there and finally a rail here a rail here with minecart hoppers on both of those finally i want blocks along here and some blocks here and then i'm going to quickly build another of these devices this is now fully built so if i now put any item here so let's just go with an iron ingot what you'll see is it'll go through it'll go through the portal and it'll come back through the portal then go through again and it'll just keep going around and around and as long as i don't stand too near it and pick it up then the item will keep going backwards and forwards and keep this chunk loaded and all the ones next to it loaded as well which means these amethyst clusters will grow even when i'm not here the next thing i'd like to do is once again try and get every single achievement because 1.17 means that there's a load of brand new ones one of them that i can get started involves getting some cauldrons we've got loads of iron right here let's make 55 of these okay a little bit overkill and next i need to place these cauldrons somewhere that can pick up the snow that will do for buying my house but i'm also going to go over to spawn at some point it's going to snow out here and when it does i'm going to be ready can't do much more in that department until it starts snowing so instead i'm going to grab some wheat and go searching for more goats because one of the achievements is to breed them whilst looking for mountains i found this place already looted long ago finally a goat has been spotted and there's more than one so i can take this wheat that's it you follow me little fella and you can have some wheat you can have some wheat and i'd feel bad if i didn't give you some wheat and we got a baby goat and we got another achievement you know what if i bring this guy down here and give him some wheat we've got another baby goat they are very very adorable indeed whilst i'm out exploring i might as well try and find some glow berries but these can only be found in a mine shaft Ideally, I'd find a mesa to get a mine shaft, but I've probably got a better chance if I just go underground. Another desert temple. Golden apple and some diamonds. Actually, you know what? Diamonds are still for peasants. And everything else was pretty useless. I have never seen that many creepers. There's six down there. And this is probably a great opportunity to find a mine shaft. Look at how cool this deep slate area looks. Cave number two. Oh my goodness, there is a mine shaft. Now I just need a minecart chest. Two have been spotted. Look at that. Beautiful glowberries. Anything good in this one? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can't get much luckier than that, can I? Let's enjoy the glowberries. And that is another advancement. I actually called them by the correct name this time. And that also means that I now have five notch apples in total. And the only other thing that I'm going to need whilst I'm out here is some copper. Oh my goodness, <laughs> the little fellow down here. I wish I had a boat. And by boat, I mean bucket. I mean, you can't be put in a boat, can you? I'd also like to know why I can't find a single piece of copper in this ravine. Finally, I found some. Wow, I found another mineshaft, which contains... Uh, well, nothing much exciting, really. But copper right next to it. Another piece of copper here. And once I've gathered all of this up, I think I'm going to go back home. Don't know how to tell you guys this, but I <laughs> got completely lost. But I found another minecart chest with more glowberries. At this point, it's probably just going to be faster for me to portal travel back home. I managed to find a bastion on the way back, which is perfect since a pigling brute is one of the mobs that I have to take out. And there we go. We got another advancement. And now I'm home sweet home. Let's smelt all of this copper. And the glowberries can be added to the cave chest. I'm also going to take a glow ink sack, make a sign, and this can go right here, and I'll call it SB's house. Then I'll dye it red, and if I go like this, we've got glow and behold. Not to mention it looked pretty cool. There's now quite a few achievements that involve copper. One of them is to make a lightning rod. Another needs amethyst shards to make a spyglass. And then I just need a bunch of copper blocks. This first one's very simple. I just have to look at runner. 
through a spyglass. And the other achievement is to look at a ghast with one. What's the next thing that I need to do? Well, it involves copper and also some honeycomb. Oh my goodness, I didn't know I had this many bees. Look at them all out in full force. Let's grab a piece of wax, place the copper, then we wax it, sort it, and then we take the wax back off. <laughs> Sorted. Blimey, I didn't know there was a secret one. Look at the ender dragon through a spyglass. Well, since I now need a thunderstorm or a blizzard to do anything else, might as well go over there. But first, I'm just going to kidnap a villager. What's this place going to be for? <laughs> You'll know when the time comes. The day it starts snowing is the day I can get powdered snow. Next on the agenda, head to the end. And here we are. The TNT's still falling. Well, there's definitely a chance that trying to get this achievement could completely break the farm. To be honest, it now works a lot better in 1.17. So if I try looking up like this, is it going to work? Can I do it through a block? Apparently not. I'm going to have to improvise. I'm going to fly out. This might break the farm. This, this might be the end of it. There we go. We got it. Okay, please don't break the farm. Please, just, I need to go back here. I think it's going to break it. Maybe if I just leave, everything will be okay. No, I can't leave. Oh, no. Yeah, it's broken. Well, that's my creation done just for an achievement. Great. Now I've got to somehow defeat this thing before it ruins everything. I really am so sad. Look at this. This is, this is actually, this is an emotional moment. So much work went into this farm and it is ruined. Oh, my goodness. And I'm using top. I'm all out of sorts, guys. I've got to try and take this thing out before it perches. This really is just pain. It's just, it just makes me so sad to see this. I mean, you know what? If I was to die now, well, <laughs> this is so much This is so much pain. This is so sad to see this. That's it. Go on. Go into it. Ruin it. Why did I think that the achievement was more important? This is what you've done to me, you Mojang. My beautiful, beautiful farm. Yeah, good riddance. There's repeaters everywhere. You know what? I'm just leaving. I don't even want to ever come here again. Goodbye, end. <laughs> it was a good run. I'm kind of miserable now, but let's do this healing power of friendship. Maybe that'll make me feel a bit better. All right, Axel, Ollie, you are... Wait, did you want to escape? You want to escape? Come on, then. one of you's coming with me. It's this guy. Oh my goodness, he's going to eat my fish. No, you're not. Don't you dare. <laughs> Get away from there. The turtle eggs still show no sign of hatching. I think for this, I'm going to need a drowned. We've got one over here. Let's spawn the axolotl. And he, 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 he just instantly died. What? We've got another axolotl up here. Hopefully he fares better. I'm going to get out my lead and see if this works better. By the way, guys, axolotls are pretty broken on leads. So that axolotl's just hit him. I'm then going to take him out. And then when he hits the other one, if I do that, there we go. We got the achievement. And now there's not much else I can do except wait for snow and wait for lightning. And next, I think it's time I did some more draining of the monument. As you can see, I'm about a third of the way there so far. So I'm going to get to it and place loads of gravel. Doing it like this is the safest way, but doing it like this is going to be much faster. And once I finish placing this gravel, another strip has been complete and it also drained even more of this thing. And a wandering trade has moved in. But I think for today, that's enough work. I'm going to get on with my next project. And that is to try and get the rarest axolotl in the game. Whilst I do already have these guys, I want the blue one. This will be extremely, extremely tricky because from my understanding, you can only get a blue axolotl from breeding, which means I'm going to need a lot of buckets of tropical fish. I've got 10 shulker boxes, which means I can get 270 tropical fish. Hopefully that's going to be enough for the blue axolotl. Next, we're going to head to a coral reef. Here is the place. Let's start collecting fish. And there we have it. The first shulker box is full. That is full shulker box number two. And that is shulker box number three. Shulker box number seven. And finally, that is 10 shulker boxes. I'm going to be pretty disappointed if I don't get a blue axolotl out of that. I'm going to grab a load of chests, line them all up along here, and I can start filling them up. And there we go. They're all filled up. I'll grab a few ladders and make an easy way in and out. And now comes the fun part. Breeding all the axolotls. And the first one, we, we just got a pink one. I feel like I should go on a quest to hunt down more axolotls. Are you kidding me? Tropical fish spawn literally right by my house. There's the creeper farm and <laughs> here's tropical fish. That's good to know for the future, but right now I want axolotls. And to be honest, I think the best way is just going to be for me to make a little axolotl farm. Right here, I'm going to dig a hole, which has to be deep enough so that it's below sea level. This is deep enough for me. Now I just want to make it a lot wider. The hole is complete, but you know what would be perfect for this? Tinted glass. So I'm going to go and see if we've got any from our farm. It's going to be very interesting because I've never used a chunk loader before. Oh, look at this. They're all nearly fully grown. This only has a 36 in from before. And it's about 20 minutes before all the pistons go off. So that can mean only one thing. The farm is technically working. It just hasn't quite been three hours yet. Let's grab a few stacks of glass and see just how much of it can actually be tinted. So we can only get 48 in total. Man, tinted glass is a tough thing to get. But anyway, here's the plan. First of all, make sure all of the floor is stoked. And do the same with the walls. Next, fill this top bit in with tinted glass. 
glass. This is so weird, it's, it's completely dark. I'd also like to make a bit of a window right here. So I'll use the last of my 18 pieces. Next, I'm going to completely fill up this room with water. Now I'm going to build a bit of a way out of here for myself. And look at that, it's already working. Axolotls are spawning. Let's get some stairs, grab a door, and also some glass. So by placing stairs along here, this will spawn proof this area. And finally, glass at the bottom will spawn proof this. I can't really use light to do this because otherwise it'll stop axolotls spawning. Finally, a door like this so that I can easily get in and out, but nothing else can really escape. All right, axolotls, you're coming with me. It's quite nice as well that we've made a glow squid farm. Let's release these guys into here and do more breeding. All I know is getting a blue axolotl is going to take a long, long time, but it'll be a serious flex when it eventually happens. Don't mistake these fellas right here to be blue ones. These are called cyan axolotls. The blue ones are a lot more blue. Axolotls are no longer spawning in here, apparently because... What are you doing here? But I think that's because I have too many in the tank through there. I've also realized that if I want to, I can light up this room because I'm using tinted glass, so it doesn't matter. I'll probably come up with a new axolotl system at some point because it's not going to work forever. Brand new plan. Rails can now be placed underwater. Now, can axolotls go into minecarts? That's the that's the big question. Oh, look at that. They can. I haven't really thought through this plan. I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to leave it for now. But at some point, I will create a much better breeding system. I think it's about time I did some more stuff down here. And that involves doing a load of digging. All sides have now been dug out. And there's plenty of gold blocks here. So I can start filling in the walls. And I'm just starting to come to the realisation that I'm going to need a bit more gold to finish this. Another material I'm going to need quite a lot of is birch and thankfully this chest is full of it i'll also grab a little bit of glowstone some glass and finally some grass so in the corners we're going to have glowstone with birch wood as a border and then glass panes in front and then i can start to fill in all of the grass blocks there we go as you can see on this one i added puzzle to the middle so i'm going to have to go and find more of that there is a little bit in this chest but it's still not quite going to be enough although the good news is I live very close to a giant tiger biome where Podzol is everywhere. Now, I've definitely got more than enough. Are you kidding me? Why are there creepers in here? Gotta be very careful that nothing goes wrong. Oh, <laughs> me and my big mouth. Thankfully, the damage isn't too serious. There we go. Good as new. I'm also going to craft a load of birch stairs and start adding them around the edge. Why is there creepers in every single one? What are these, like creeper tanks or something? And somehow we've got a cat down here as well. Look at that, it's running from the cat. The cat is chasing it. This is, this is brilliant. Oh, don't go down there. If you blow up that chest, I will not be happy. Just getting rid of this ice up here. I'm going to replace it with dirt. And the final thing I need to finish this place is more gold. So I'm going to go ahead and get that. And whilst I'm there, I can also mend my tools and my armor. I've now got all the gold I need. And we're also over 600 levels now. Let's fill up this roof like so. Next, I'm going to need a lot of flowers, which I have lots of thanks to my iron gold. Farm. And whilst I'm at my house, I might as well breed more axolotls. So far, still no blue axolotl. Next, I've got a lot of flower placing to do. And there we go. Next, I'd like to sort out this corridor and fill it in with birch planks. And for the walls, I'm thinking honeycomb could be the way forward. I'm starting to realise that I haven't quite got enough honeycomb to finish this. But I've still got these two stacked, which if I craft them together, gives me 32 pieces. Which isn't far off the amount I need, but I still need to fill in, like, these walls here. I think the best way to speed things up with that is to try and breed more bees. Next, I need to come up with a new floor. And once again, I'm at my house, so I shall breed more axolotls. And still no blue one. But there is a few cracks in the turtle legs. I feel like I should use some wool for this build. And since bees are yellow and black, that's what I'm going to try. So I'm going to set this inside bit to be yellow wool. I'm not sure where I'm going with this, but a strip of orange next to that. And finally black on the edge. And there you have it, completed. We chuck all of this wool here and it'll filter back. And next I need more torches. Coal is something that I have more than enough of. Let's get some sticks and make torches. These can be placed here and also along this top bit and on the other side. More honeycomb has arrived. Let's make it into some blocks and continue to finish this place. I think I've had enough of that. I'm just going to quickly grab myself a few more carrots and I'm going to go and check on the amethyst farm. Talk about moment of truth. This is whether or not it worked. I have a good idea that it did. Look at that. Okay. Hey, I know we only got 10 shards, but that at least means that something has worked. I may increase the timer if I get too few on the next one, but it's still got like two over two hours to go before it, they all regrow, so... There's no rush. These 10 shards are coming with me. Another thing 1.17 has added is an infinite way to get lava. So right after I've fed these guys, we'll be doing that. But to do that, you need dripstone. And at the moment, we've only got 13. But in order to make this farm, we're going to need like 50 pieces. So we're going to have to go looking for more. I don't really know where it naturally generates. I just find it in random caves. I, I usually find flooded the best way to go. Okay, so if it's a too high one, you can get two pieces. That would make sense. We are playing Minecraft. But yeah, I haven't read up on the uh, on the best ways to find it. There's also a mine shaft here. Always like to check these in case I find a notch apple. Look at the size of these. Perfect. So does that mean I get three? For oh, okay. Well, I broke that. But I think it still did give me three. So that's good. I need about 40 in total. And so far... We're on 13. Look at this, a random pillager outpost. I mean, it has wood in it, it has potatoes. I, I don't really see any use of anything there, really. More caves. This one does go quite deep down. But the real question is, is there dripstone? Now with this geode, you know what? Do I grab the shards? Well, apparently none of them have grown, so <laughs> I guess that's a no. And another one up here? What? 
I found two. Wouldn't it be great if there was something more exciting in there? Start to realize how much of a pain it is to find dripstone. Look at this, one lonely piece. I could grow my own dripstone, but it takes five days to get one piece, so I don't really think it's worth it. Finally, look at the size of that. This is what I've been looking for all day. These pieces should give me all the dripstone that I need. Let's just place this along here. We don't want to lose it. Carefully break all these. I think I'll grab every bit I find because it's going to be hard to find in the future. Of course, that means... Going down there for one piece. Uh, never mind, make that two. But now I'm getting out of here. And the lava farm can be built. To go along with this, I'm going to need some glass, a load of buckets, and a load of redstone related stuff. And have everything I need except for a load of cauldrons. What I made there is not going to be enough, so we're going to get even more. Thank goodness I have an iron golem farm. That's everything. Let's get to work. Although before I do that, let's get more axolotls. Don't know why they had to make this guy so ridiculously rare. I reckon the perfect place for a lava farm is next to the smelting room. I'll sort out the aesthetics a bit later. Right now, it's just a case of getting it working. First thing to be done is to get the cauldrons down. What I'm doing right here is making a massive square of the cauldrons. And in each corner, we're going to make a little system that pushes the pistons around so that this middle one keeps changing. To do that, I'm going to need an observer here and then a couple of repeaters going out of it with some redstone along there with another repeater, all of these on full ticks. And this is going to be in every single corner. Next, I need my ice and we're going to put it along here. And yeah, we're just going to create like a beam of ice. I just find it kind of cool that we're using ice to create infinite lava. Minecraft makes no sense. I'm also going to grab a load of blackstone since that's what I'd like the walls to be. I'm going to start adding lava up here just to test out some of the aesthetics. Okay, you do need the ice behind it and you need blackstone above it. I think before I go any further, my best bet is going to be to completely fill in all of the lava. And there we go. All lava has been placed. Let's add blackstone above this. It doesn't really need to be all the way around because you're not going to see over here. And there also needs to be blackstone above the glass. I have to say, it's starting to look pretty good. Next comes the dripstone, which is going to be placed under the ice. And this will very, very slowly fill up the cauldrons. Let's add some stone bricks along here. As you can see, the cauldrons are filling up. This final cauldron is going to go here. And I'm going to activate it with a button and the machine will begin. Notice how it's now slow and steady moving the cauldrons along. And now it's time for the collection system. The system's pretty simple. Basically, every time something drops into here, you get an item out of the dropper and the lava bucket will go into this chest. A nice little chest system can go here, which will be filled with lava buckets. And that's about it. I just need to get loads of regular buckets in here. And thankfully, I have an iron farm for things like this. And yeah, this thing's kind of overloaded. That's going to be perfect for making loads of buckets. Well, I didn't have to get a lot of buckets. More than enough for this machine. In reality, I actually got way too many. So I'll leave a load of the buckets here. What I'm going to do is place some glass along here as a bit of a protection. Grab a stack of buckets. Completely fill up my inventory. Hold right click and then do F3 and T. And I'm successfully AFK at the farm. I AFK'd for over an hour. I did not expect it to be this successful. Look at the amount of lava that I've got. And I believe to stop the machine, I just have to mine one cauldron. And to be honest, I don't think I'll ever have to use this farm again. Having said that, I am going to need some lava since when I built this farm, I accidentally ruined the floor. And there we go. That's all fixed. I can empty these cauldrons to get more lava, breed more axolotls. And look at this. My turtles have hatched. Come on, guys. You don't belong in here. Go ahead. Be free in this place. And that means only one thing. I've got scoots. I'm also going to go and get some name tags in case they despawn on me from this fella right here. There we go, fellas. You should be called the turtle boys. This place just feels so much more alive now it's got the turtles. Come on, fellas. No need to be hasty. Just get in there. That is 10 turtles in total. And these scoots can safely go into this chest. Next on my list of things to do is to check on the amethysts. None of the sides have grown. That piston is permanently extended and it looks like this was recently moved. From what I can tell, I'm going to need more stone to make the timer longer. Let's grab two stacks of stone, which will add 128 minutes to the timer. Should really add a ladder so I could get up there easier. Thankfully, in my ender chest, I keep plenty of wood. With these ladders, I'll be able to get up very, very easily. Let's add all of this stone and now we can get out of here. I also might as well break these because these are just going to Drop me the shards and go straight into this chest. A bit of manual farming for you. Back to breeding these fellas. After doing some research, it turns out you can find blue ones naturally as well. But when 1.17.1 comes out, that will no longer be possible. I don't know if you just witnessed that, guys. But there, it turns out this sheep right here is orange. He's in the green one and he's orange. No wonder I only have... 14 green wool now. I was wondering what was going on. These shears need to come out. Let's grab some cactus. Smelt it so it becomes dye. And give this guy the colour he deserves. Look who just spawned up here. I've finally done it. I've finally got a pet creeper. Yes, creeper kit. Don't you dare blow up now. We can't, we can't get too close to him. Can I, can I put glass in front? Will that, will that stop him blowing up? Does, does that work? Hi, creeper. Can you see me? Oh, he has absolutely no idea that he's being watched. Well, that settles it, guys. I now live with a parrot, a goat, a creeper... <laughs> Two end of it. <laughs> yeah, you like that? That's right. And of course, my three dogs. And I still have my dream of creating a full netherite beacon, but if I want to do that, 
I'm gonna need way more TNT, which means grabbing some shulker boxes and going to get sand. I managed to fill four and a half shulker boxes. I couldn't finish this one because my shovel is very nearly broken. Only two durability left, that was a close call. So I'm gonna head back home, repair my shovel and place all the sand in this chest. As you can see, I have a couple of yellow shulker boxes that have sand as well. So all I'll need is gunpowder in future. Another go with these axolotls. This place does look pretty ugly. I think I need to make these walls a bit nicer. So that's the roof done and I'm gonna need a lot more blackstone if I wanna finish the walls. So I've come to a bastion to steal their blackstone. Three stacks of blackstone should be enough. Next, I'm gonna add some stone brick stairs and place them along here like this. Let's make place blackstone and polished blackstone bricks. Mine out all this and there we go, it's complete. Except for a couple of straggler blocks. Next I'll grab a few torches, add them on the sides. It should be perfect, look at all this. The cauldrons have all filled up, but with this much lava, we can just leave it alone. I might as well tidy up this staircase as well. There we go, that does look a bit better, doesn't it? Even if it's still a complete mess down here. All right, this is the one. This is when I get that blue axolotl. Come on guys, please don't let me down. Nope, <laughs> still no sign of one. And as the sun sets on this world, that was 1,200 days in hardcore Minecraft. Please subscribe.